Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the Internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live on the Inception Radio Network. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you are listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. RPM, Recognize, Plug-In, and Manifest. Are you a spiritual seeker ready to move forward in your life? Dear Lord knows I'm ready to expand every possible way I can, any opportunity I can. If you're wanting to shift from struggling to feeling that life is effortless, send me an email to book a free session at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Title that email, free session. I'll give you 30 minutes, 45 minutes, however long it takes to help you move further into your blissful life, that which you desire, that which you deserve. And we can maybe look at something that you wanted to move through, something you wanted to bring more of into your life, and you realize that you are the fertile ground that brings that into your experience. I'll be, I'm the guy. I'm the guy to, and, you know, if things get a little stubborn, I'm also the guy that will push you off the cliff. So you can bet on that. So if you're serious about your transformation and your expansion, send me that email at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com and say, Keith, I want my free session. I'll show you how to move into the RPM program, recognizing what spirit is, how to plug into that, and then, God, things get really, really easy in the manifesting process. If you have been a Center of Light radio follower for a while, you know that I spend most of my time creating things. Uh, there's a sign-up form on the opening page. You will... Um, if you fill that out, I have a newsletter program that's about to begin since we're the new year. And by the way, welcome back. It's been a couple of three weeks since I've done a live broadcast, and I'm, I'm just excited to be back, especially with my guests. We'll get to that shortly. Fill out that subscription form you know, in bundles uh, via email. You will begin to receive all of, check this out, all of my creations for free. I woke up one morning. Spirit spoke to me loud and clear saying, Keith, you don't own it. You don't have a right to hoard it. Give it away. Sign up that form and it will begin a chain link of events. You will begin to receive stuff in bundles. In bundles. Also, that red moving Ferrari that settles on the opening page of centerflightradio.com, it'll take you to my RPM program and it'll tell you what you get and what you will create. So make sure you check that out. Um, also, let's see, any new announcements? Just trying to get back into my groove. It's been a while. I say we just put that aside for now. Let's get down to Center of Light Radio business. Tonight, my guest is Mr. Brian D. Harden, and we're going to be talking about future hacking. Brian will talk about personal and social solutions for our evolving world. Brian says, I'm addicted to thought and addicted to creativity. That's why he and I work so <laughs> well together. I am always making something studying something or playing something. I believe that imagination is more important than knowledge. I try to play more than I think. I follow my intuition, my heart, turn off the judgment, including judging myself. I've even I've been blessed to be able to meditate and be in ceremony with many great elder leaders. And he has a list of many different tribes and some of them I can't pronounce. Let's just say many upon many. I am focused upon sharing messages of hope and understanding to the world. I am obsessed with creating great projects and sharing a clear explanation of what changes are happening to humanity and how we are all unifying, and I see it, how we are all unifying and collectively raising and shifting our consciousness. There are two websites you can visit to find more about my guest tonight, Mr. Brian Harden. One of them is www.newways.com, new meaning K-N-E-W, ways.com, and also at www.brian.com. D. Harden.com. Welcome to Center of Light Radio yet again, my bro. <laughs> Hi there. Hi there. Hey, how was your gig last night? It was good, man. Uh, I love sitting gigs, getting a phone call out of nowhere saying, hey, man, you know, we need a sit-in bass player. Would you do it? And I said, what kind of stuff are we doing? And they say classics, and they'll say, do you need a rehearsal? I said, nah, let's just get in there and do it. And I like being in that position of not knowing exactly what's going to happen and being able to pull it off and um, have it come through really, really cool and meet some new cats that I've never played with before uh, just makes things really fun. Did, does that get you in a good place for your talk that you do live every every Sunday night right after that? Does that get you in a good place? 
Yeah, uh, it opens me up. And, you know, sometimes when I do my Burst of Light live listening audience, I do uh, live feeds often. So find me on Keith Anthony Blanchard on Facebook to be a part of that. But it, it the door is already open. Instead of me going through 10 or 15 minutes of the dialogue in the, in the live feed, um, doing the musical gig for four hours, I come home, I'm busted wide open and ready just to shift and just get right at it. So the reason all that's important to me to bring up is your living life creatively and most people don't know how to live life creatively they don't open themselves up to being creative with their music or their art or their the way they drive or the way they speak or connect to people and you you try to bring that theme throughout all of your life don't you It's uh -oh. me. I, I cannot turn it off. It's everything I do. I, I have a fire lit under my ass, and there's no way I could snuff it out, even if I try. Perfect. Well, so when, um, when you and I spoke last night, I said I wanted to kind of jam today, and I want to ask you just as many, many questions as you asked me. And so let's ask the viewers, too. I love it, by the way. <laughs> let's ask the viewers, uh, what is your purpose in life? Because this is the new year. And so let's talk about purpose in life, not only for you, but for everybody on the planet. What, do, you, do you know everybody typically has a common purpose that everybody actually has? Do you yeah, believe that? Yeah, absolutely, emphatically. And it's a matter of whether those are engaged and in touch and implementing that in their life or not. Well, you talk about it, I think, with, with some of the Ferrari uh, comments, and you and I have talked about it, I, I think, years ago. I don't know if it was live on the radio, but it was basically, if you ask someone, what's your, what's your purpose in life, and they, they say, oh, I want a big company, or I want to be the CEO, or I want to I want to uh, make an album that goes gold, or I want, and you keep asking them, well, why do you want that, and what's what's the purpose behind that? And they keep asking them and asking them and asking them. Eventually, it the, the last answer will be because it makes me happy, right? Absolutely. And it sounds like to me doing that list, that two-column list of getting clear. So you have a list that says bullet point number one, I want peace. And then the second one bullet point is I want a car. And the second one is I want a loving relationship. And so you go through the entire process and then you begin to go backwards. You begin to scratch off those things that are really not important. And eventually you lead up right to the first bullet point, which is peace. Because with under the umbrella of peace is inherent Inherent is everything that you've asked for through the rest of the list. But it took you to go through the entire list to get the realization, the integration effect, that really all you want is peace because under the peace umbrella is all of it. Yes. You love it. You, you, you want – so everybody's seeking joy in their own way. They're seeking some level of joy. I also see some level of freedom and some level, level of appreciation. So their purpose and then seeking freedom and appreciation in, in, in harmony. Do you agree with any of that? Uh-oh, did I lose your audio? Oh. No, you didn't. I, I have a habit of muting because oh. I cough. I've been sick. But no, I totally, yeah, absolutely, totally agree with that. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so so uh, purpose Finding your purpose and really watering it down. I mean, you, you, most people most people make these purpose that their purpose is so big that they never even try to step forward into it. So I make first my purpose of that last question, which is joy. And if I make joy the, the first thing, and not only joy for myself but bringing joy to others, at some point I get my frequency happier. And then my relationships are easier. And then with that, I get better support. I get better appreciation. So here it is the beginning of the year. Everybody's making these New Year's resolutions. I say resolution number one is follow your bliss. Do you agree? Totally. Yeah. What else and, is there? And then spread, <laughs> spread that bliss. Share your laughter. Because everything's contagious. So, you know, we... We quite often do that hilarious thing, which is, you know, here, I'm going to yawn. And I bet you you're going to yawn, too. And it's contagious. If I laugh, 
it's contagious, you'll laugh. If I'm full of anger and hate and fear, it's contagious. So what we really want, what our purpose in life is, eventually waters down to that joy. Why don't you just make the joy your thing? And then you attract things. You know, they say it's, it's actually uh, not a spiritual thing, but it's also on, not only a spiritual thing, but it's also a law of physics that that you it attracts uh, you attract what you are, and so if if you put your frequency, that's your that's your Ferrari story. Do, do you want to tell the Ferrari story or a synopsis of it? There really is. I don't have a particular love for to one day own a Ferrari. I think it's a beautiful creature. You know, I use Ferrari because if you think about sitting in a seat or going to a lot that has such automobiles and you liken a Ferrari, uh, call you a Ferrari your, your spiritual passion. And you think about what this car is, and you sit your ass in that seat and you start it, and it begins to purr under you and the power that it has and its beauty, and it's a very finely tuned machine. And if you liken that to yourself, you know, if you want to create something in your life, let's say it's a Ferrari. Go down to the dealership that has such uh, such automobiles on their lot and admire one, appreciate it, touch it, sit in the seat, ask if you can test drive it. And when you make that experience real for yourself, you are closer to bringing that automobile into your experience. So the Ferrari for me is basically just a metaphor of tapping into your own internal power. The, t the trick for me is to Feel the feeling. Yes. And and it's not the Ferrari that you're after. It's the feeling you're the after. The feeling that the Ferrari brings you. That's right. So when I meditate now, I actually meditate with the feeling. I seek the, the feeling. So my meditation starts with a smile. And, I, and what happens is it unclenches my heart. And it, it lets me start to breathe. And then I realize, oh, what are you holding on to? These crazy patterns. They say that... Uh, most people have, I don't know, something like 80,000 thoughts a day, and like 79,993 of them are the exact same ones as you had yesterday. And we just keep repeating these patterns, and that's called our programming. And so you have to break the program, break the mold, and move forward back to yum, <laughs> right, to the good feeling. It's all about the feeling, you know? And so then when you have the feeling, when you have the young, when you, when you are, then you can spread the feeling. You can share the feeling, and then you're much more useful. You're more useful in your work, in your relationships, in your family, and, and in attracting support, you know? I love the two words that you use that you've chosen, yum or yuck. We can say good or bad, uh, joyful or non-joyful. But I, those two right there, it's they're so simple, it takes any ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey-minded ideas out of it. It's, it's very, very deliberate, and it's very simplistic, and it's very, very clear. You're either living in yum or you're living in yuck. <laughs> so, you know, the yuck part of it really kind of paints a picture of muck. And what are you willing to do to get out of that and get back to your original nature, as you always say, get back into yum? So with that, let's do a little test with, our, with ourselves and our listeners. Um, think of something that makes you feel so good, like, you know, eating a strawberry, and all of a sudden your mouth will start to water. Or... Uh, uh, some great thing that happened to you as a kid and, it's, and you feel the sunshine on your face and the wind through your hair and you feel that moment and when you're in that moment there's such a feeling your body actually releases endorphins and energy that that makes it healthy and heal right and the opposite's true whenever you stay in that other pattern it creates dis-ease or uneasiness or emotional uneasiness so if you focus on the yum, if you focus on something great, and you're smiling and, and so on, you literally cannot think. If you, big, if you genuinely get your energy right, you can't think of the negative thing. You can't think of the negative thought. And so it actually puts up your shields to the negative, dis-ease creating emotion. And then you're back into healing and unage and... Yum. It's easy, right? See, Brian, a lot of guests that I've interviewed, we, we're all 
share something in common. We share this fire. We share this joy. It's something I, I want to acknowledge you. I mean, looking at your posture, looking at the look on your face, the things that we're talking about, the level that you emote your passion, you know, you and I are very much alike. It's like have, having done so much internal work or and shifting to different realizations, it's like nothing bad can happen anymore. And if something, quote, bad could happen, something of the yuck factor, it's just we've grown sense. to a level it, that is... We're no longer in that because the perception is shifted as such. We no longer see things as bad or yuck or this or that. We've relaxed and we have let go enough to take it all in to see it as a beautiful beautiful part of the human dynamic and dance. Is that how it feels for you? Oh, yeah. Um, with the Dakota Indians, they, they uh, with the Dakota Indians, they have a thing called Wopi Da or Wopi La. And it's about giving gratitude, being thankful for what you really have. And so when you're in that gratitude of giving grace and thank you, uh, you can't be full of the negative. And so for me, life is the choice of, of staying positive. I, I think it's actually even so much with our creative thing, create or destroy um, whenever I'm not being creative, whenever I'm not sharing my joy and my passion, uh, generally I get self-destructive. Self-destructive. I, I, I love that you said that. Robert Tennyson Stevens, I interviewed him one night and he leveled me. He said that any thought that you think is not the highest contains components of self-destruction. Exactly. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, because you start to fear. Fear is, you know, low energy, and that'll that'll take your body and spin it in in you know anxiety, depression, and so on. And some of these things to get out of them. I mean, I've never really been depressed for more than a couple of weeks uh, in my own life. So I'm not really uh, like I was never an alcoholic, so I don't know how to help an alcoholic. I was never depressed, so I don't know how to help the depressed person as well as someone who's actually been there and dug themselves out. And so I'm open to learning techniques to help people that are down in the dumps. Um, my techniques actually, once you get up, uh, keep me up. You know, I try, I'm more of a butterfly. <laughs> you know, but at some point, I guess I did go through a cocoon, you know, but I, I'm not good at digging myself out of the cocoon, you know. Have you, have you ever dug yourself out of a cocoon? It took me two years of a dark night of the soul, but one day I woke up and said, that's enough of this. That's enough. And I did tell myself that the week before and the week before and the week before, but there was one morning I woke up where things shifted. I said, that's it. That's, and from that, I got out of the box. The box opened, and I wasn't satisfied with the box just being opened. I climbed out of it and realized that I never had to be in there in the first place. And I really think that's when everything began to shift for me and amalgamate to such a way that there's no way to unlearn what the choice that I made. There's just There was just no way. Isn't it fantastic that sometimes the breakthrough only comes when you finally break down? You know, whenever <laughs> yeah, right. so the breakdown leads to the breakthrough and, the, and you know, the, the term sick and tired, you know, it's when you finally are sick and tired of being sick and tired. You were like you were down, down, down. You were finally done. There was nowhere else to go. You were you had already gone to the end of the, the, the cul-de-sac and you might as well turn around and go back towards the sunshine again. Right. Yeah. Totally. Brian, the other night I did a Burst of Light Live titled, What Other People Think About You Is None of Your Business. Right? Perfect. <laughs> and, lit and I had no notes, and this was not rehearsed, and I, I was just going at it off the cuff. And what, I, what dawned upon me as I was doing this Burst of Light Live is that worrying about what people think about you has everything to do with self-judgment. And so what we do is we project ourselves, our crap on the others, because I don't want to own it. I don't want to own that I'm beating, beating myself up. Or to someone else wondering if that they're thinking this thing about me. One is what they think about you is none of your business. The other, the other part of that would be 
if you have a concern that someone else is thinking something, thinking thoughts about you in a not so good light, could be your conscience speaking to you saying that, well, you did recently make a poor choice and you should reconsider ever doing that again. But it's all about judgment, wondering what people think that keeps us. In fact, if you are living in your life in the modality of worrying what others think about you to any level about anything, you are choking the life out of you. You're, you're a slave. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I wonder. Uh, I wonder about the programming. You know, we talked about programming again. Our, our thoughts, the same thoughts every day, you know, are similar, and we keep. That's the pattern. That's our. That's what we're feeding ourselves. That program. So when you start let, allowing for the other judgment of yourself, either your self judgment or the judgment from outside yourself to matter. Then you're you're allowing some external program to program you. So obviously, it's your choice, yum or yuck. If the program's working for you, great. If it's not working for you, change something. Get sick and tired of it. Get more sick, more tired, and then finally you'll go. Oh, I need some more yum in my life. I need some more change. So I can't. Einstein said, uh, uh, "Insanity is repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result." So obviously, we 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 program ourselves with, I'm not good enough, I'm not fast enough, I'm not thin enough or young enough or tall enough or whatever it is, and then you're not enough. And then, you know, you, you speak about this all the time, God, I am. Whatever you put behind the word I am, that's what you are. And so I am happy, I am alive, I am joyful, I am thin, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. You know, and at some point, so you know this this New Year's, you know, the New Year's resolution should be to start feeding yourself the right programming to say, "I am enough. I am beautiful. I am talented. I'm gorgeous." Because everybody, I mean, if you really look at the whole world, there's uh, room for everybody's talent and genius and brilliance. And I mean, some people, their genius is to take care of animals or take care of children. And that's their genius. And a CEO couldn't even get close to that, you know? And they're the ones that should be paid a billion dollars a year, you know? So, you know, anyway, it's, it's, but they get, maybe they get the billion dollars in appreciation, hopefully. And that's in the joy of doing it, you know? But so all of us have our own genius and also our own idiots. I mean, <laughs> no, you know, we're all, we're all dysfunctional in our own ways, right? Beautiful ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian, would you say that 2018 is the, well, we should have done this long ago, but, you know, last night in my live feed, thank you for showing up to that, uh, I had mentioned something that people say, well, it, a new year is not really that big deal because five minutes before 2018 actually happened and then five minutes after is really not a big deal. Well, I, I care to differ because if you have a mass consciousness of people who are, uh, or believe in the idea that something has ended and something new has begun, then obviously we're supplicating to universe that we're wanting something new. And in that response, that we that reflection that we get back, 2018, uh-oh, we're getting closer to 2020. <sighs> we're getting more and more into the future, future hacking, the title of this broadcast. So now that we're Things are being disclosed, cosmic disclosure as far as, you know, extraterrestrials. But even so, we look in the political arena, all that's happening there. Look into the terrorism arena, all that's happening there. A long time ago, well, recently, a few years ago, Ebola was a big deal. Now it's obsolete. Terrorism was, ISIS was a big deal. Now it's obsolete. This was a big deal. Now it's obsolete. So now we move into this place that we call 2018. Do you support or echo the idea that it's really time that we start getting our spiritual or our emotional stuff together and balanced and right ourselves because if not, the monster that can be created from that can be so big that your life will turn over and there may not be a way to balance that and you can literally possibly check yourself off this planet. Oh, yeah. Here, check this out, our recent history. Um, Humanity was chopping wood and carrying water for, you know, I don't know, thousands and thousands of years, right? And then finally, we had this industrial revolution. And now remember, we've got things, the body, 
the mind, the spirit. We have three pieces of our whole that makes us holy or complete. So the physical thing was the industrial revolution. We suddenly started to get trains and steam, steam engine trains, and then we eventually got uh, uh, telephone and uh, television and electricity. We discovered electricity. That was only about 120 or 130 years ago. That wasn't that long ago in the course of humanity. So we had this industrial revolution, and that, that was the physical stuff, body. And now we've had a mental revolution of the information age of all the, well, television and radio and so on came earlier, but what we really have is the internet. I remember being a child uh, in, in high school and I was dreaming about this little black box that you could ask it a question and it would just tell you the answer. And now everybody's got one. And we're all addicted to it in our own weird way, but that's the information age. You can find out any bit of information you need instantly now. And so we've had the physical revolution, body. We've had the mental revolution, mind. Now what's left uh, to make us whole is our spiritual revolution. And the spiritual revolution is hard to define. In Christianity, they talk about Oh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, the Father's like the mind, the Son's Jesus, or the body, and then the Holy Spirit's this other thing. And if you, if you go to church much, most churches don't speak about the Holy Spirit very much because it's hard to define. And in we know what the body is. It's right here in the moment. It's right here, and it's owl, owl, or I'm warm, or I'm cold, or whatever. It's in the moment. The mind is everywhere but the moment. It's always in judgment. It's thinking in the future and in the past. The reason we have two eyes is so we can see distance. The reason we have two ears is so we can hear location or wherever it is. And so all that adds up to your, your brain is always in judgment and always it's the trickster. So the body's in the moment, the mind's in the, 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 the trickster that's anywhere but the moment. But the spirit, where, what is that? Well, that's our trick. That's when we talk about God. God is both here individually and it's in everything. It's in everything. And so that's the all. And I had a near-death experience, and so I got to go to that little all for a split second and connect in, and I know <laughs> it really does exist. And that's it changed my whole outlook on life. Some people do DMT or mushrooms or ayahuasca to get to, and then it changes their, scrambles their brain, and they go, oh, there is a God, and God is in everything and everywhere. You don't have to do that. You just have to get to the realization of, oh, you don't have to die to get there, I hope. But, but you get to the realization that God is in everything. And that's the Holy Spirit. And so that our evolution of consciousness is that getting to that thing where we're all. If I treat you badly, I better expect it to come back. Treat badly. There's the, the yawning and the laughing and everything else. It's, everything's contagious. So you're writing. I mean, here, we're at the beginning of the new year. You're writing the next chapter of your life. What's your 2018 want to look like? And it, does it want to be happy? Does it want to be full of fear? Does it want to be arguing and complaining and blaming uh, our government and our people and whatever? Does it, I mean, being aware of all that's good. But keeping that pattern as your only pattern and not going to yum or creativity or, or helping and serving others is the bad part. So, you know, our trick is uh, is how to flow and be aware. And, you know, there's, there, there we're in our spiritual world again. How do you, how do, you do that, you know? <laughs> My name is Keith Anthony DeBlanche, host of Center of Light Radio, 6 p.m. Monday nights. That's Eastern Time every Monday night. Tonight I'm speaking with Brian D. Harden. Brian is a pretty powerful individual. No, he's a powerful individual. Very, very big in the music field. He's produced many of the albums throughout the years that we've heard all these phenomenal artists. Um, you can find more about my guest today at www.newways, that's K-E-K-N-E-W, ways.com, as well as BrianDHarden.com. Brian, um, something you said a minute ago, I heard uh, you, you called it the, the, uh, we, we were in the, t the, a the age of information and now we're in the age of spirituality and also heard it called the age of disclosure. Mm. The Bible calls it revelation. Things are being revealed. So the truth is stepping forward. Armageddon. We're beginning to see it. 
is the isn't the root of the word Armageddon to reveal? <laughs> right, right, right. Is, is it really? Sure. And I also heard you say something about the holy uh, the holy Trinity. I heard recently the holy Trinity could be possibly better seen as a set of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but Father, Mother, and Child. Hmm. Wow. And third, third, right? And thirdly. Uh, you had mentioned, you know, we had a place in 2018 in the politics and the terrorism. I have three tenets. One is the truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. Number two would be get out of the fight. Politics, re religion, this, that. That's all, and, and it's all an internal bickering. It's just all an internal bickering. And you can water the weed or water the plant. And whichever one you give your attention to is the one that's going to grow. So I applaud that if you have a group of people in your life that you no longer want to associate with, that you affirm to yourself, I no longer choose to associate with these people. Though your intentions to reach your goal is good, you are still watering the weed. Because you're focusing on, I no longer choose to be around these type of people. So what you do is you take your water bucket and you turn toward, this is now what I choose versus this is no longer what I'm choosing. What are your thoughts on that, sir? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you're saying a prayer with everything you do. <laughs> you're right. You are. And, and, and we're also making, we're voting with everything we do too. Meaning like, if you buy bad products, you're voting for that company to continue to exist. If you wanna change things, if you don't like the way they do genetically modified food, for instance, you can buy organic food and invite others to, to do the same and make that your passion instead of hating the, the, the poisons in the bad stuff, you can spread the love of the healthy food. I mean, you know, they, they have a health food department in our, in our grocery store. If, <laughs> what if does there's it make a everything else? <laughs> food, what's the rest of it? Yeah, right? right. So uh, it, it's sort of the same way with television or with the news. Uh, we can, instead of focusing on everything we hate, Find the parts that we need to love and need to grow uh, and focus on that. And like, instead of killing the weeds, you're growing flowers. Isn't that right? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes weeds are a good thing, depending on your application of what you're needing said thing for. Brian, what do you think is happening in our skies? What do you think that's all leading up to, you know, with others that have been here on the planet? You know, God knows what's happening on the dark side of the moon. You and I have been wanting to talk about this subject for a while, and we never really motioned towards talking about our cosmic brothers and sisters. Are you game for that, sir? Oh, well, well I, I'm game for anything. <laughs> right. So let, let's hope everybody can stay with us. I, I, uh, <laughs> I've, got, uh, I, I've got my nephew who is, uh, he's now 20, and about a year ago, he and his best friend and I were sitting on the beach in the middle of the night. We look up, and I, the, the one friend of my nephew at the time was very stuck, super intelligent guy, very stuck, and gun-toting, killing things for fun, uh, uh, super educated, but angry you could see he was an angry kid and he didn't believe in any anything he said he was an atheist and I look I point up at the stars and I, and I and explain that the nearest star to us is eight light years away meaning the light coming to your eyes is eight years old and so it's we can't even comprehend eight light years of travel uh, the speed of light is so beyond what I, you know, what a car can do that it's almost un unimaginable. And that's the nearest star. And our little star has got eight or nine planets wrapped around it. And you multiply that by every star, eight or nine. There's the latest uh, estimate that I've heard of was 70 sextillion. That's 23 zeros behind 70. 70 sextillion stars. It's just mind-blowing. It's billions of billions of billions of galaxies. 
and we just we can hardly wrap our around our head around our little it's place. Right? <laughs> and so we basically Earth is just a grain of sand on a cosmic beach. Yes, we are. We are actually enough. we're actually far out. We're like in an unremarkable distant area to where we're not even in the traffic zone. We're way off in the field. Yeah, way we're off. not in the cosmic life stream. Imagine what's taking place towards the cluster, the center. I have no idea. <laughs> we just got electricity 120 years ago and in airplanes and cars and oh we think we're so involved. Well, you know that you and that you say that look what we've done in yeah. that 120 years because we had such an amazing technology boom in those 100 plus years then in since the dawn of humanity. So imagine these civilizations that exists out in the cosmos. That you know, what do they call them? The um, the ancient um, farmers. Imagine where they're at and what they're doing, what they're capable of. Well, so for us to think we're that God, whatever your version of God is, <laughs> made this little blue dot in the middle of seventy six trillion stars that have eight or nine blue dots wrapped around each one of those 76 trillion, there's a lot of chance for life. And just even on our nearest planets, Mars and so on, we look for water and we're finding it. And if there's water, then there's organisms, you know? And so our alien brothers right now on our near planets might just be, you know, bacteria or, you know, microbes or something. But on other planets, they might look like, you know, huge cockroaches or, uh, or you know, giant cockatoo birds. I don't know what they are, you know. But it's even impossible for us to wrap our head, heads around everything, including that it might not be physical. As we evolve, you know, from the physical to the mental to the spiritual, as we evolve, maybe these creatures have evolved to a point where they don't even need their body so much. Yes, because no? when scientists look out, well, let's say SETI or any of those people who are looking for extraterrestrial life, and they say, well, there's none on this planet, but they fail to see that life is what's spinning the planet itself. Now, when you go at it from that perspective, for example, if you're listening to this broadcast right now or watching it, um, let's, let's call that Channel 3. This is Channel 3. You're not aware of Channel 2 and Channel 4, but they do exist. So they're looking for beings on the frequency or the bandwidth that we operate on, and they, they do not realize that in other dimensions, which are infinite, if God is infinite and omnipresent, there's no place it is not, Webster's Dictionary, and if God is love, then the only thing God isn't is fear, and that's our own fabrication. So when we begin to use these kinds of modalities, to, to see, we begin to see differently, and we begin to know things greater capacities than we've ever known before because we're not so monkey-minded, muddled-minded. So this team, life is teeming everywhere on every possible bandwidth, every possible frequency. There are beings, sentient beings, conscious beings, unconscious beings. It's everywhere. So yin and yang, the black and white. The, the the shape of that whole thing too, that whole twist, the Fibonacci spiral. The Fibonacci, it's so beautiful. If you if you look at uh, pine cones, I could bring you over one right now, pine cones or seashells or or a sunflower or so on, you see the fib Fibonacci. If you flush the toilet and watch the water, it goes down like that. <laughs> it, this is if you stare up into this the, the heavens and look at the stars, they're rotating like that. They, they're, it, the whole world is moving that way. But that yin and yang of like dark and light and working together and um, growth happens with that yum. Decay happens with that yuck. And progress, evolution, happens with that yum. The opposite, keeping still, not moving. They say insanity is repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting, the, to me it's insane to just stay. We have to evolve, we have to, we have to keep changing. And I'm learning lessons every day. I, I really try to. I, I know you, you do too. You, we sometimes take in, though, negative 
things in order ed to educate ourselves. And like, you know, our government and, uh, you know, technology sometimes abusing, you know, technology or whatever it is uh, that, that ends up being dark or holding us back. And our, our trick is to stay positive with it and, and use it as a medicine. Uh, what is uh, Buckminster Fuller said that pollution, well, of course, which is bad, was actually an untapped natural resource or an untapped resource. So sometimes you can use that negative in a spin. And recently I've seen that people are doing that. They're taking... Uh, the pollution from power plants or whatever it is, and they're converting it to something else. And so how can we as humans in this meat suit temporarily and as spirits in this meat suit evolve to take our own pollution and convert it to that? Being sick and tired of whatever the pattern is in our brain or in our being or body and converting it. I've seen spontaneous healings happen because they make a, a decision, I'm not going to die. I'm going to move along. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my health back and I've got things to do. My grandmother was told one time, you're going to die within two or three weeks. And she said, I can't die. I've got things to do. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, she could have bought into the idea, right? Yeah. You know, like Deepak Chopra had said in an interview I saw many, many years ago, he says, you know, we were doing, a, an ex, I would say, maybe an experiment. He says, we were testing something out. We had a whole bunch of people in the office who recently had biopsies. And he said, I pull out a card, John Doe, positive. I mean, you're negative. He said, you can see the life come right back into his face. And you pull another card out, and to tell the, the new person that you have cancer, he said, you in that moment, you could begin to see them die right before your face. Yes. They, right. Now, have you ever seen uh, this test has been done where uh, scientists have taken that same thing, placebo and nocebo, which is uh, they, they've given the – that same test with the idea that they tell someone something bad and then later tell them that it was a lie and that the person can't convert from the negative back to the positive very easily. So uh, the other way where you can go from positive to negative easily, but you can't easily. And that's that, that, uh, what, what do they call that? Uh, uh, it's not discernment, uh, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. Yes. yes. And so, that's pretty powerful if you think about it. And you can even have someone, you can present a new idea, a, a truth to someone who is set in their ways, and they will even agree with you consciously. I get it. I understand it. But yet something inside of the monkey mind does not like the idea that, it, that their system is being bucked and they will still reject it because they have to go through a set amount of work to be able to come clear and align themselves with the new truth. Mm -hmm. And that can be difficult for some. Well, I think it's difficult for everybody, and it, it's a pattern and a practice. So the pattern and the practice that we, that we uh, the habits that we make, that is us. And so whenever we choose to uh, be negative, you, you become negative. And you're, you, the, the way you think, the way you respond, you're always in fear, always ready to respond, always ready to fight, argue, blame, and complain. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an energy, a low energy. When you're optimistic, I mean, I, I, when you're optimistic, you can talk your way out of things that would have been catastrophes. I, I heard of a guy. <laughs> yeah. I heard a guy. He was, he, was, he was in Miami airport. And around Miami airport back in the 80s, they had a horrible air, air area in the middle of the night when you left. You had to go drive through this horrible area. But I think since they fixed that. But anyway, he's in a convertible. And he pulls up to a little stop sign. And he's the only person in the middle of nowhere. And he pulls up to a stop, stop light or a stop sign in the middle of nowhere. And a guy pops out of the darkness. And he's in a convertible puts a gun to his head and says, uh, give me all your money and give me your car. 
and the guy being positive and open-minded and ready for for the optimistic it's all going to work out perfect he looks at the guy and says oh that's a Colt 45. That's a beautiful gun. <laughs> right. Size gun. And the guy goes, yeah. And he says, well, is it, a, is it the pearl handle or is it the black handle? Oh, it's the pearl handle. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful. Yeah, and it, <laughs> off to the right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a 1963 or whatever. He had, so he, just like you would talk to someone about a guitar, right? And, and so he, all of a sudden, the guy was thrown off. The guy in the car says to the guy with the gun, so is the gas station up here on the left or on the right? He says, oh, it's up there on the left. He goes, okay, bye, and he just drives away. And the, <laughs> cause he had no fear, the, 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 it's like the animal didn't attack. Basically, if you're afraid of the dog, the dog will attack. If you're afraid of the bear, it'll attack. If you go optimistically open with it, and stand your ground and do the right thing, the an the animals will feel that, and that includes us as an animal, or even potentially the spirit energy. You know, will will follow us too and respond. You know, so it's basically staying conscious. And I love the story because the guy stayed conscious. In fact, when he started talking to the gentleman about the gun, I'm assuming how it could have played out as the guy, the assailant, or would have been. Um, now saw this guy as a friend. Why would you want to rob and or kill your friend, right? No. So it changes. <laughs> Love it. Carolyn Mace. Uh, some years ago, the spiritual teacher Carolyn Mace, her and a friend were driving through Chicago, and there was a riot that was taking place on one of the streets. And when she came to the realization of what was happening, uh, her passenger friend began to lose it. She says, no, 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 don't go there. Just imagine we are riding in a parade. And the people before her and the car before her, they were being drug out of the car and being hit with crowbars. And same idea was happening to the people in the back. But her, their car became invisible. They just pretended they were riding in a parade. It shifted the entire dynamic. Brian, I wanted to ask you something, sir. We're talking about what's happening in 2018, future hacking. And I suggested in a burst of light live feed that when you, let's say, for example, you go out to a club and you're hanging out with friends. And you have a group of people over here that are somewhat negative, And if you hang around them too long, you're being swayed. And because you kind of start feeling that way yourself. And here's a group of people over here being positive. And because they are being positive, you're being swayed. So it seems like you would want to hang out with those people instead of those. But the, the, what I am offering is that there's a third component. Because we're living in a world of duality, the good and the bad, the positive and the negative, the good people, the bad people, that when we get out of both of those potentials of being swayed by either side and we let the Christ or the phoenix rise or the lotus flower blossom to where we're not swayed whatsoever by the bad or the good, that we become planted like a lightning rod. So now what happens is... I become the tone setter. I can set the tone that changes the entire dynamic of the room. Not only does it help the negative people in the room, it actually lifts the people of the positive pole even to a higher vibration because I have the spirituality and the groundedness about me to set the tone. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, yes, yum or yuck was a choice. <laughs> if we can go back to that just for a second, yum or yuck was a choice. But sometimes when you ask your spirit, I want to evolve, I'm ready to go to another level, I'm ready to break out of the cocoon and go from being a caterpillar to a butterfly, it's sometimes messy. This spirituality, it's not like all of a sudden you see uh, unicorns and rainbows everywhere. No, this is messy. You are doing battle. You're having to learn how to do martial arts in your spiritual realm and your mental realm and, and your physical realm all together. And some, it's, sometimes when you ask for that spiritual growth, what happens is you get ill. You, the pattern gets revealed. You get mentally challenged. You get socially challenged. And, and so um, be aware that this spirituality is a breakdown. It's dissolving the old patterns. And so with that, I, I would say expect a, expect a wrestling match with your soul. 
<laughs> right? And expect growth from that. Um, so the duality of, of all that is to finally get to see that every crisis is an opportunity to learn and grow. Every problem is a way for us to actually evolve. If you look, if you look at every problem you've ever had and every bad relationship or whatever, you can actually ask the question, what did I learn from that? And did I repeat the pattern? Did I, you know, have relationships with certain types of people and then keep repeating that over and over again. I've seen, you know, children of alcoholics date alcoholics. And eventually they go, okay, I'm now no longer going to be a codependent person. I'm going to evolve beyond that. And the lesson was to evolve beyond it. And it might have taken them six times or ten times or three times to figure it out. And, and the trick is to figure it out. And then once they figured it out, then they were able to help other codependent people or other alcoholics or whatever it is, they, whatever the problem was, and they learned it. And from then on, they knew how to help people, and they were in their service. But it took, you know, it took a while to get there, and, it, and they had to do it the, the, the hard way. You, you know, know and I, I recently had someone tell me, you know, I wish I could just throw away all those horrible things that, that happened to me. I said... In so doing, you were actually throwing away the very wisdom that has shaped you up to this point. Yes. You know, you know, while we're in it, it seems dark and thick. You know, it took dark and thick and two years of it for me to have had enough. And I'm sure you, know, you even look around you in, in your physical life and you see people, your loved ones, friends, family, who have come down with a, a serious illness and that they survived it. And because of said illness, on the outset of that, they are a totally different human being, totally new, reborn. Reborn. They, that's the born again, you're right. And, and, you know, you can make the choice to be born again every day. Uh, I try to learn something new every day. I try to challenge myself every day. Um, a lot of times I just repeat the same 8,000 or 80,000 thoughts over and over again. But sometimes I find myself breaking out of it. As long as I focus on that, that feeling and what's the feeling that the 80,000 thoughts are giving me, then I, once I realize the feeling or the pattern or whatever isn't what I really want to be, where I want to be, who I want to be, what the thought pattern is, what the feeling is. And so, you know, I, I get, I, I, then I change the thought patterns. Then I change the pattern of, of habits. And so what are some of the good habits you have? I, I know meditation is one of them that we both do. Can you explain anything like that that, that that can help people? Brian, I play music. That's one of the things that keeps me expanded. You know, me too. You, know you were talking about the 80 or how many thousands of thoughts we have a day. So if you try to go at it from that point of view and tackle every thought, your work will never end. But if you change the feeling, become aware of the feeling, your feelings are encrypted with all those 80,000 things that you're trying to change. Change the feeling. You know, you can cut every branch on a tree that's rotten in your backyard that represents all your woes and your troubles. Or you can pull out the chainsaw and walk it down at the bottom of the, tr at the trunk and be done with your problems. But playing music is a blessing to me because I'm always in the zone, in a hyper zone. But I, even though I do still sometimes do formal meditation, right now I'm on meditation, but when I wake up in the morning and I sit at this computer and I have nothing before me and I go, what am I going to create today that's going to contribute? The Spirit automatically opens me up and I become imbued with divine power and I feel it and I begin to expand. When I do these bursts of light live videos, I even tell the listening audience and the viewing audience, watch in about 10 minutes, you're going to see my whole disposition change. Because something else, and I don't mean that to imply that I'm separate from spirit, but something else that I don't know as often as I would like begins to sit itself in my body and I begin to play and live and experience that energy and the more I do it the, the more the intervals become shorter in fact the intervals begin to not happen at all I'm always now in it we have body mind spirit so that your body is connected to the mind to start with 
And once you turn the mind off and get it out of the way, I mean, it's it's good to know what key you're playing in and so on. The spirit starts coming through, and your fingers literally move on their own. Your heart opens up, and your brain stops thinking about anything or worried about anything or judging anything, and you just start moving with, with nature. And uh, same thing happens with all those great sporting guys, uh, like uh, – uh, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or any one of those guys that they know, everybody in the whole team and in the whole stadium knows the ball's going to go into Michael Jordan and there's three seconds left on the clock. He doesn't think about what's going to happen with the ball. He just goes to a place where the spirit can connect in to his body and he literally tells himself, I can do it. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I don't care about the idea. I just know I'm going to do it. Let's go do it. I have confidence in doing it. There's there's the yum again. And it's it's that prayer of I can do it and it's going to happen. It makes it happen. Yeah. Brian, when you and I have these discussions, the hour flies by like, wow. Uh, all my listening audience, just to let you know, I've been speaking to my producers. We're about to take Center of Light Radio to a two-hour show. Hang tight for that. Brian, we have one minute. <laughs> Please give us a final thought. Um, laugh more. Worry less. Love all. And do it with gratitude for everything. And that's, that's, that's including all the good stuff, all the bad stuff. Be grateful. Because the bad stuff teaches you lessons. The good stuff, yay, I got some more good stuff. You know, some more yum. So uh, laugh more, worry less, love all and do it with gratitude for everything. How about that one? Is that pretty good? Yeah, everybody, everyone in the chat room is just metaphorically standing up and giving you a standing ovation. That's awesome. <laughs> right, right. Thanks. Brian, yeah. thank you. I will be in touch with you soon, sir. You are important to me. I love you, bro. I love you, too. Thank you for having me on. And everyone, let's get some music together soon. Oh, I love you to produce an album. In fact, my spiritual band, Lavender Soul, is... Memphis of the members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra we're about to start writing a new album. I'll take you on that off. Everyone y'all heard Mr. Brian shout that out here on the show now, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, Mr. Brian D. Harden, a very dear friend of mine. I love this guy. I love this guy. Next week on Center of Light Radio, Michael Illusier, a world renowned law of attraction teacher. The guy is on fire. I look forward to seeing you. Remember, when you lay down at night, you have nothing to do. Breathe, breathe, breathe like you want something beyond the Lord that you've ever experienced in your life. If you set up that kind of intention, and that sincerity, and that passion to reach that place, you will find yourself in a deafening, profound silence that has everything, not only that you've ever wanted, but everything that you are. Peace, love, and light.